Well, this week marks 80 years since more than 20,000 Americans gathered at New York City's Madison Square Garden for a Nazi rally. It's an event that seems unthinkable today, but few Americans know that it even took place. Filmmaker Marshall Curry is hoping to change that with his documentary short, A Night at the Garden, which is comprised entirely of archival footage from the rallies. Let's take a look. <music> Undivided allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well, A Night of the Garden is one of five films up for Best Documentary Short at next week's Academy Awards. I spoke to Marshall Curry from Los Angeles and asked him how people have been reacting to the film's subject matter. I, I was shocked. Uh, I, I think very few Americans know that this happened there. Um, and, and pretty much everybody who's seen my movie has been very surprised by it. What was the mood in the United States at the time that led to this? Well, you know, America uh, um, was in many ways different from, from how it is now and in many ways was very similar. Um, I think that in 1939, uh, anti-Semitism and, and an interest in fascism was, was still a minority opinion as it is today, but it was considered a legitimate point of view. And there were people like Charles Lindbergh and Henry Ford who were openly anti-Semitic. Father Coughlin was a a radio show host who had reached 30 million American homes where he said good things about Mussolini and Hitler. Um, and when you see 20,000 Americans gathering in Madison Square Garden, you have to know that many times that were, were sympathetic to this, uh, to this point of view, um, but didn't make it to the rally that night. So um, I think that's one of the things that, that was disturbing was the was the scale of, of interest in in fascism and in uh, you know anti-Semitic anti-minority um, points of view. What's shocking is that they were willing to come out so publicly given the backdrop of what was happening across Europe. I think that's right, and 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 I also think that's one of the reasons that many people have forgotten about this chapter because once World War II started. And, uh, and German soldiers started killing American soldiers. Um, we kind of erased the fact that anybody in America had ever uh, been sympathetic to this. Um, but, but now we're seeing a creepingly, creeping rise in, in uh, hate crimes and anti-Semitic crimes. And, and, uh, um, and that's really frightening to me. That's, that's the reason that I wanted to share this part of our history was with the hope that that if we knew how Americans had been uh, spellbound by, by demagogues like this in 1939, perhaps uh, it would make us less susceptible to, to, to their tricks uh, in, in the current day. Give us uh, an idea. You talk about America in the 1939, in 1939 as being similar to America today. How, what sort of parallels are you drawing? Well, you know, I think this is less a story about majority opinion of Americans than it is about American and human susceptibility to, to leaders who, who do certain types of things. In the film, we see Fritz Kuhn, the, the head of the German-American Bund, which, you know, he considered himself to be the American Fuhrer. We can see him take a stage that's adorned with American flags that has a huge portrait of George Washington with swastikas on either side of him. And we, we hear him attack the press and we hear him tell uh, his audience that they need to take America back from the minorities who are, who are ruining it. And when a protester runs out on stage, uh, they beat him up and while, while the audience sort of laughs and cheers. And, and I think that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, demagoguery is something that's been around for a thousand years and we're seeing it again today. With, with certain parts of American leadership that do these same things, that attack the press, that scapegoat minorities, and, um, and wrap uh, intolerance in the symbols by, by perverting the symbols of, 
of American patriotism. Are you saying Donald Trump is mirroring that kind of behavior? I think he is. And, and it's not to say that I think Donald Trump is a Nazi. I don't think he wants to set up death camps. But I think he is somebody who uses uh, division and and distorts patriotism for his own personal political gain. And, and, and I think and I think similarly, there are, are large numbers of people who are falling prey to it. So you're saying that that is quite dangerous to incite that level of feeling. I think it's very dangerous. I mean, we have a president of the United States who ran on the platform of excluding a certain religion of people from coming into our country. That's unfathomable to me. Um, and and uh, right now, he, he often, you know, makes jokes about violence against protesters. He attacks the press and he attacks the institutions that, that in my opinion, are the things that make America great. I mean, the United States was the, the First Amendment of our Constitution allows freedom of speech, allows freedom of religion, and and uh, allows freedom of the press. And all three of those things are things that he sort of sneers at as as political correctness. And and I think it's it's very dangerous. But what is the undercurrent in America running through that is allowing this? Um, you know, I think that that. Any time that you have uh, stressful periods, people look for somebody to blame. And when when you have a leader who's willing to take advantage of that, um, he can he can you can make people lose their humanity. He can he can help people to to forget that the people that are that that, that are being attacked and victimized are actual human beings. In the film. We see a protester run out on stage, and 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 while he's savagely beaten, um, the crowd laughs and cheers. And and these this crowd, these are people who would be my neighbors. I, I live in Brooklyn, and and these are people who put on hats and suits and coats and ties, and um, and dropped off their kids with the babysitter before they went to this rally. And yet they're they're cheering as somebody dehumanizes people who will be murdered by the millions in the next few years. It, it, the film is, it takes place at a point just before a horrible catastrophe happens to the whole planet. And, and the people there have enough information to know that what's going on is, is bad, but, um, but they are not taking responsibility for, for defending uh, the values that, that make America, a, I think, a wonderful country. Uh, you've been running ads across major networks to try and spread this message. Fox News has refused to run that ad. What do you make of this? I was I was really confounded and flummoxed, to be honest. They they said that the reason that they didn't run it was because they didn't want to show terrible Nazi imagery um, to their audience. But within 24 hours, other reporters had turned up examples where they had been happy to show Nazi imagery in a in a sort of fake documentary that attacked uh, that attacked the left. Um, and in in other commercials, they'd been comfortable showing Nazi imagery. So the, the, the excuse that Fox News gave was on its face totally absurd. Um, and truthfully, in the past, there have been ads that were beyond the pale, where Fox and MSNBC and CNN all agreed were too much. Donald Trump uh, uh, supporters ran an ad that everybody agreed, even Fox News agreed, was too racist to, and, and too anti-immigrant to, to play on television. Um, this is not that. Good luck at the Oscars. We'll be keeping an eye out for you. Thanks, Marshall. Thank you. And of course, if any of your audience wants to see it, the, the film is online at anightatthegarden.com.